Hello, uh, once again, welcome. We do have another problem here. So we are supposed to evaluate this closed uh, integral. Uh, usually they put this uh, circle, small circle here to indicate that it's a closed around, it's a closed surface. Usually when you're dealing with ellipses or circles, so they use the closed circle there. So that completes one function around the circles. Usually some other questions may not clearly specify circles. They will say maybe uh, along a surface C such that that it's upon you as a student to determine what type of a surface is that. So I'm going to show you guys why are we seeing that is a circle and I'm going to I'm going to propose a solution for this one. So modulus of z is equal to 1. What does that imply? We can just say let z be equal to x plus i y in general. So modulus of z will be equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Modulus of a complex number is taken to be that, which is said to be equal to 1, right? If we square both sides, it implies that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. What is this? If we compare this equation to the equation of a circle uh, in general with center AB, you can clearly see that this, this is a circle, right? This guy here is a circle centered at the origin. With the radius, with the radius one. Okay, you, you we are just comparing. R is one. So you can clearly really see that this is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of one. We will use the same intuition for this one. If you do the same, you okay, we'll do that when you get to B. So let's use this information to find that integral. Okay, so here's the solution for part A. So the modulus of z is equal to 1 is a second centered at the origin of the radius 1. So for part A, we are saying this integral, say bar squared dz, is equal to, remember, the integral over a surface of some function f of z, dz is equal to the integral from a to b of f we evaluate the function uh, for ct, and then we also find the derivative, and then we plug t there. So we will call that formula to, to simplify this one. So, so for this one, we need to determine ct. So for modulus of z is equal to 1, then we need to determine the parameterization of this surface. So we determine that's a circle. So to, how do we parameterize? How do we parameterize any given circle? So we parameterize a given circle by uh, z naught plus r e to the i t, where z naught is uh, the center and r is the radius. So everything else follows. So let's do that. So for this particular case, the part A, so we are going to see that the parameter, so CT will be equal to Z0 is a 0, 0, the origin is a 0, 0, so we don't write anything. R is 1, the radius is 1, so E to the, so the parameterized function is E to the IT. So therefore, that integral, so the integral of z bar squared dz is equal to, we take ct, place it into z bar squared. So it's none other than, so we put the integral. Okay, so so for this second, the standard of the origin, of course, uh, our t, if you can call this t theta, is going to, to vary from 0 to what? 
it's a circle, it's 0 to 2 pi. Uh, it, the, the conjugate of that, the conjugate CT bar is, we apply just a negative here. All right? Okay, that's, it's very simple. Why we put the negative? So, E to the IT is none other than cos T plus I sine T, right? So, if I want the conjugate of that, I'll put the conjugate over that. So, it, I'll only apply a negative on the imaginary part. So, the conjugate of that is that. So, if, if I do this, Remember, this is, so, okay, I want to bar that. So, this is cos t plus i sine of minus t. But cos t is the same as minus t. Remember, this is uh, an old function, right? So, in this case, this will be equal to minus my angle is now minus t instead of t there. So I'll have minus it. So the conjugate of that is e to the negative it. So the conjugate of my ct, I'm replacing there, will be minus it there. And this is this part. Then the derivative, the differentiation with respect to t, it will give me minus i, uh, minus i e to the negative i t. Okay? Yes, we'll bring down that, and then that the t. Okay, so if we multiply this, you end up with no, 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 no. CT does not have a negative, right? So the derivative will be just an i down e to the it. Okay, so we, if we simplify, it's supposed to be squared, guys. Z bar is supposed to be squared. Z bar is supposed to be squared. So if we square it, the two will come here minus two it. Okay, these common mistakes. Okay, mistakes are common here. Yeah? So it's always good to refer or to check z bar is the one that is a negative, but if it's squared, the two will come. So if we remove brackets here, we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi. I can take out this i and add the powers. So I will have e to the negative i t dt. If I integrate that, I will have minus i e to the uh, negative i t evaluated over 0 to 2 pi. If I do that, I will have minus i because e to the power of 2 pi e to the power of minus 2 pi i is equal to cos minus 2 pi plus i sine minus 2 pi. This guy is always 0, but cos negative 2 pi is 1. Alright? So I'll have a 1. Yeah? Then if I put a, a 1, a 0 here, e to the power of 0 is a 1. So I'll say minus 1. So this integral is a zero. All right? It's not that bad. So let's quickly check part B. So we are now considering the modulus of z minus one is equal to one. This is again a circle, but why are we saying it's a circle? So let's see. Okay, but clearly, straight away, you can do the parameterization. I, I, I give you the formula. For circles, you would say the parameterization is Z0 plus R e to the i t, where Z0 is the center. So this, so we need to determine 
the center of that circle, but with the experience, you see that the center is at one zero. But now let's see, modulus of z minus one is equal to one. So you say let z be equal to x plus i y. We, we need to determine the center of the circle. If we put, so the modulus of z minus one is equal to modulus of x plus i y minus one. So I'll group the real part and the imaginary part separately like that. So this is equal to the modulus of a complex number is the square root of x minus one squared plus y squared. But this is said to be equal to one. I will ignore this other piece, I consider the square root sign going to one. If I square here, I will have x minus one squared plus y squared is equal to one, right? Let's compare this equation now with x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to one. What is this? This is the R squared here. This is the general equation of a circle centered at a, b. So now if you can compare, so it means the center of this circle in question is a is one directly and b is zero. So this is the center. So we don't need this. So this is the center of this circle. So you can clearly see that, oh, the city, the parametric function for this circle is z naught is one, zero. So it will be one because one, zero is a complex number is one plus zero i. So I don't write any i's there. The imaginary part is zero plus the radius is one. And I'll say e to the it. So this is ct for that part. And now having found ct, so now the integral of z bar squared dz is equal to, we need to determine the limits of integration, right? But of course, it's a circle, it's 0 to 2 pi as well. So 0 to 2 pi. And then we need f evaluated. We place ct in f. Take this, put it in here. So uh, if I, I want the complex conjugate of that. So let's see. I want ct bar. But 1 plus e to the it is the same as 1 plus cos t plus i sine t, right? So if I want the complex conjugate of that, I want also to apply a bar there. All right. So this will be, this is the real part, this is the marginal part. So it will be 1 plus cos t minus i sine t, which can be simplified further to 1 plus cos t plus I sine negative t. I can take this t to be minus t because I know the behavior of cosine. So what is this? This is equal to 1 plus this alone is e to the negative i t, right? This part on. So the conjugate of that, I will only put a negative on i t, right? That's what I wanted to prove, guys. So now the conjugate of that will be 1 plus e to the negative i t. Okay, squared. Because z bar squared. And then the differentiation of that is uh, i e to the i t. Then you place the t there. If you simplify brackets, you end up with integral from 0 to 2 pi. Let's remove brackets then. Or if you want, you can square. First, we have 1 plus 2e to the negative it um, plus e to the minus 2it. All right? This multiplied by, so we can take the i out and do the it inside here. dt, this is equal to i integral from 0 to 2 pi moving brackets, we have e to the rt for the first one, 
and then this will be plus a two alone, then uh, plus e to the negative i t d t. Don't be tempted to simplify this because that's addition. If we integrate, we have an i out, and we have integral of that, it will be e over i plus 2t minus e to the negative i t over i evaluated over 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so as well, this is not scary if you remove brackets, you end up with uh, e to the i t plus 2 t i minus e to the negative i t evaluated over 0 to 2 pi. If we do that, plus 2 pi here, e to the i 2 pi, Remember, this is equivalent to cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. So what is cos 2 pi is a 1. Sine 2 pi is a 0. So I'll get a 1. 2 pi here, it will be plus 4 pi i minus. We put 2 pi here. Remember, cos minus 2 pi is a 1. All right? Then close brackets minus, let's put a zero here, e to the zero is a one, that's a zero, minus e to the zero is a one, one minus one. So these two offset and then we will remain with four pi r. Okay. Thank you very much guys. See you in the, in the next video. Thank you.